All right, guys. You don't need fancy flour to make great Neapolitan style pizza at home. See? I made this using a basic all purpose flour that you can find just about anywhere. So let me get into a simple overnight dough recipe that turns out pizza just like this. Start with 727 grams or 25 and two thirds ounces of all purpose flour. Then add some room temp water. The total amount needed is 495 grams or 17 and a half ounces, but reserve a few tablespoons to bloom the yeast. Now, mix the ingredients just until you have an evenly wet dough. I typically start with a fork, then transition to using my hands once the dough starts to come together. I recommend sticking to the bowl here though. I'm not sure why I decided to switch to the counter, but that was totally pointless. I guess sometimes you gotta look dumb on YouTube, right? Anyway, cover the wet dough with something like a reusable shower cap or a damp cloth and let it rest to hydrate for about an hour. This step is called autolyse. It helps to jumpstart gluten formation. It reduces the kneading time and makes the dough easier to handle. The results are better too. After an hour, the dough will look something like this. You can already see that the gluten is working its magic. Next, bloom a quarter teaspoon or two grams of instant dry yeast into the remaining water. Now you could go straight in with the yeast, but since I'm hand mixing, I think the yeast is easier to incorporate if you dissolve it first. Add the yeast mixture to the bowl with the dough and work it in until the dough has totally absorbed the liquid. This will definitely take a few minutes and a little bit of elbow grease, but you'll get there, I promise. The last ingredient is, you guessed it, salt. You'll need 18 grams or a half ounce of it. Now, don't forget the salt or your dough's gonna taste like cardboard and you'll deeply regret it. Work it into the dough in batches until it's completely dissolved. The dough's gonna feel kind of grainy at first, you know, because of those coarse salt granules, but as you continue to work it, it's gonna feel smooth, and that's what you want. From here, just continue to knead the dough for about 10 to 15 minutes. Try to mimic this motion that I'm doing here. I'm sort of pushing the dough out with my hand, then bringing it back and turning the dough about 45 degrees with my other hand, and just repeat the process over and over again. The dough's ready when the surface is smooth and silky. Shape it into a tight ball and place it into a lightly greased bowl. Cover the dough up and let it rise at room temp until doubled in size. To speed up the process, you can place it in your oven with the light on, kind of like I'm doing here. My dough was ready to roll in about five hours. This is how the dough should look after the first rise. You can tell that the yeast is very active, providing some lift in the form of CO2. The surface of the dough is still very tacky and hasn't formed a skin. This is good. Hit the counter with a little bit of flour just to minimize sticking, then carefully turn the dough out of the bowl. Try not to leave too much of it behind. Cut the dough into four equal sized pieces that should weigh right around 300 grams each. Feel free to weigh and adjust the size of each portion if you want to get super precise about how evenly they're sized. Shape each piece of pizza dough into a tight ball by sort of tucking it underneath and into itself. Then roll it around on the counter in a circular direction with your hands. This motion along with the friction created on the counter will increase the surface tension of your dough and give it a round, smooth appearance. This motion can be a bit tricky to get down, but I'm confident you'll pick it up with just a little bit of practice. Now, place each piece in its own lightly greased storage container. Here, I'm using some three and a half cup Ziploc brand containers, but sometimes I use black ones that are about the same size. Snap the lids on, then store the dough in your fridge overnight. They'll be ready to use any time after noon the following day. Just make sure that you rest them at room temp about an hour or so before you make pizza. It is a bright new day, literally. <laughs> I've got my, my dough here. It's been cold fermenting overnight and I'm ready to bake my pizza, okay? So I pulled the dough about an hour and a half before I'm ready to bake. Preheated my oven. This Caro 16 stone is uh, temping out around 900 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a little hotter than I ran my Coda 16, so take note of that. Just because of the oven, it needs to run a little hotter. You can see the dough right here. It is ready to roll, man. There is a lot of gas in there. See that? Okay, so uh, generously flour. The top of the dough with some bench flour. This is a mix of semolina, 50-50 mix of semolina and double zero. And for this case, you could use all purpose too. But um, I like sort of a split, 50-50 split. Okay. Turn it out. 
Come on, baby. There we go. We'll just do this real quick. I've made pizzas on this channel so many times, you don't need to see it again. So I'll kind of speed through this process. I'm just gonna push the dough out to the edges here, leaving um, enough for an outer crust, okay? You can see this dough is very easy to work with, even when using all purpose. It almost feels like dough that I made with double zero, seriously. And this is just King Arthur all purpose, but you can use really any all purpose. Flip it over, again, press out to form your outer crust. And once you've done that on both sides, go ahead and just work around the edges here, kind of turning the dough using the, your knuckles, using your knuckles like this, turning and stretching, okay? Let gravity do some of the work here. It's pretty important. And you should be able to get a dough that is uh, about 13 to 14 inches in diameter. You could stretch it a little bit thinner, but that's generally where I end up. About 14 inches. And as I pull this pizza up onto the peel, it's gonna stretch out a little bit more too. A Little bit of sauce here. This is not a white pizza day. Go, someday I'll get the right spoon for this, huh? That looks good. Fresh mozzarella for this pizza. I think this is a, probably about, I don't know, three or four ounces. Three or four ounces, I think, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, a little bit more for good measure. Perfect. We're gonna do some Calabrian salami, okay? It's. It, very much like a fancy pepperoni. So if you can't find this in stores, just grab a decent stick of pepperoni, cut it up, and you're good to go. One more for good measure. Again, there we go. I'm gonna finish this off with some parm, decent amount of parm here. And I kinda got lazy with Parmesan. It's, it's actually DOP, um, Parmigiano Reggiano, but it was already grated at the store. So got a little lazy there. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Gonna flour my peel, okay? Not too much, just a little bit, just a, a thin coat on here, thin coat. And then Yeah, this guy is, it's, it's almost a little too big for this peel. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's bake this sucker. We'll do a real-time bake on this um, so you can see exactly how long this pizza takes to cook in the Caro 16, okay? I'm gonna run this thing on full speed too, full speed. I said full speed, I meant full heat. But you, you know what I was talking about. That looks great. Freaking fantastic. What do you guys think of that? Coming along pretty nicely. On this side over here, All right? A little bit longer. Literally just a few seconds. 
yeah, looks great. Ready to come out. Now that is a fantastic looking pizza. And today I brought out the Mike's Hot Honey, okay? And for all you haters, you just hop off this video right now and go watch something else because I'm gonna get down with some of this. Let's put a little bit. Don't wanna overdo it, huh? That's plenty, just like that. How does this look? Here. Try to cut righty. Oh man, that could have gone way wrong. All right, check this out. That looks pretty sweet. Yeah, man. And then underneath, not so bad, not so bad at all. Let's look over here. Again, not so bad. Looks pretty darn good to me. Uh, take a look over here. Can you all see that? Nice. All right. Give it a try. So this dough right here, it feels a little denser, okay? Um, you know, than one that I would have made with double zero flour, but still, I bet you it's gonna be wonderful. Moment of truth. Mm. That is it. <laughs> it's really good. I just love that, that sweet hot honey with the spicy salami. It's just a perfect pairing. I don't understand why some of you guys can't, you know, don't like it, but whatever, man, to eat your own. Anyways, the dough is, it's a, it makes a nice pizza. You don't need fancy flour, fancy caputo double zero flour to make great pizza at home. Just go to the store and grab your basic bag of all purpose. King Arthur is perfect. Just about any store has it. It's not, I'm not, this is not a, a video that's affiliated with them at all, but that's just what I use because it's everywhere, okay? So go grab a bag, make some dough, try this recipe. I'll catch you next time. Mm. Mm -mm -mm.